they'll do is they'll split off of this herd go to the breeding herd and then challenge so those male two groups and never herd. mix up their vegetation but when it comes to impala they're mixed feeders so they can decide if they want to eat grass or if they want to eat leaves so you can basically so throw them like into an any area it's rare to see them here and you can see you're straight walking for the thick bush area but how you can see is a thick bush antelope now all of them uh, the nyala kudu and bushbuck are the thick bush antelope So when they move like this, it's not just a lot of buffalo bundled up together moving along. They've got a whole system how they'll walk. In front of the whole herd will be the pathfinders. Now those will be the big dominant males like these boys over here. Think of the, the pathfinders will be all of the females and then the youngsters and the babies, the calves. And surrounding them will be the less dominant males and the sub-adults. And then completely walking at the back will be then the oldest members of the group. We're nice and quiet. We'll come very close to the vehicle. Now, if they do come closer, the flash. Put no, off sir. the flash. No, if they come closer, then yeah, put off flash. Mm -hmm. Is this a white one? Yeah. Ah And then the white rhinos you'll mainly find in open areas like this because they're grazers. Where the black rhino you'll find them more in thick bush areas. And we'll uh, tell you immediately these are white rhinos. Now these are one of the most impressive boys to see but they're also much more vulnerable to attack by predators because they're walking alone but they don't have that safety in numbers so these are also some of the most dangerous members to come across like now they'll be active. They also predate on other birds. And it's nice seeing one of them. Bull spotted owlet. Very short tempered as well, so if they're threatened they can snarl and they'll also take on any animal, no matter what the size, even an elephant, if the elephant is threatening them, they'll try to take it on. <laughs> Look how he's digging, eh? I think there might be a snake or something in there that he's trying to, to box it in or so.
Okay, don't stand up or anything now. You can come, Marius. Come, come. Come. Come up, come up, Marius. Yes. You can come, Marius. Beautiful, this is a female. We are going to go to the van and we Beautiful everyone. Young female, small head, beautiful small size. Now the males, much bigger in size, bigger head as well. and the female. The female is the one the closest, the male is the one at the back with the larger bulk. These all look like females. Now you can see the difference between the male and the female. So you look at the horns. Now the horns of the females are much thinner in size and then they've got black hair that will extend above the horn. Where the males will have a very thick horn structure and then they'll have no black hair that extends above the horn. Now they'll have a flat skinny base on top. Now they lose that black hair after a while because of the fighting the males. Fishing when they run is actually quite fast. Sunbathing a bit. Oh, it's cute, eh? Big boy, eh? White rhino, immediately you can see that, head is lowered to the ground, eating grass. You see, very dark in color. Mm -hmm. It's the soil that will determine the color. Uh, if you go more up from here, it's a very dark black soil. So if they wallow in that soil, they'll get this dark black color. But as soon as you should go to an area where, for example, this reddish type of soil, then they'll get a bright red color. Uh, he's marking now there. Uh, you'll see as we're driving, there's big dung piles next to the road. Uh, that is territorial markers for them. So what he's doing, he'll defecate there, urine spray, and then pull those back legs through the dung. Uh, that will get the scent in his feet. Now as he's walking along his per uh, territorial range, 
he's also then spreading that scent all along the area. And then those dung piles, those middens, uh, if there's an intruding male that comes into the area and tries to take it over, you'll firstly go to that dung pile, take a bit of a whiff there, smell it, and that dung pile you can then determine if he smells there how many individuals are in the area, how big and dominant the male is by uh, sniff sniffing his testosterone, and then from there he can decide if he wants to avoid the area, if he's too small, or if he just wants to go in, challenge the male, take it over. Probably also seen on TV, or might even been there yourself, the great migrations. Now these are the antelope that will do the great migrations. Now what enables them to do that is the sloping back that they have. Now what happens is, even if they run at a full speed, the gape that they give is a lot shorter than a normal flat back antelope. So if they run at full speed, they maintain a half of a gallop. Now that gallop saves up energy while they're running. Flat back antelope, like for an example in Parla, if they run, they give a massive gape and that wastes a lot of energy while they're running at full speed. So that is why they will not migrate at all, but the wildebeest will be able to do that. Regarde, il sort la tête. 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 You can see in the middle, now all of the carcasses that she gets, she'll put it there in the middle. Now that's for the big birds if they fly through here so that they can see that and not go through the web and destroy a whole web. And then these are also non-venomous spiders. So this web is extremely, extremely strong. Now sometimes even small, small birds can get stuck in this web and then they'll also catch them as well. So they'll mainly depend on that to catch their prey. You see now the big one there in the middle? Now just on top of it is a smaller one. Now the big one there in the middle, that is the female. And then the smaller ones are the males. So you can just think how difficult it is for a male to get a, a female if you're that small. <laughs> a lot of times they can be mistaken for prey. Then the female will grab one of them and eat them. <laughs> so most of the time if they do climb onto the web, they'll wait if she's busy with a piece of prey. And then she'll, they'll quickly come onto the web without being seen at all. But another way how they'll also go onto it, is they'll climb onto one of the main strands and before they go over to the sticky part what they'll do is they'll use the web to almost play like a song almost like a violin song on the web now those vibrations that are sent through will basically let the female know that a male has climbed onto the web now and then she'll determine now if she wants to let them in or not and then the breeding for them is quite interesting now it's called the lock and key mechanism now what will happen is the male 
he's got small pedipalps, two small legs on his chest. Now those two legs will have the sperm sacs. And then the female, she'll basically have two openings where only that male's uh, pedipalps can fit into. So if she's busy with a piece of prey or maybe a bit unaware, he'll quickly try to get close to her. As soon as he gets the chance, he'll just put the sperm sacs in and then he'll try to escape as fast as possible. So that is basically how they'll breed these spiders. And then it's also not uncommon to find zebra and wildebeest walking together. It's actually quite a common sight as well. Uh, the, one of the main reasons for that is they'll use each other when they feed. So what will happen is the zebras, they're bulk grazers, so they eat any type of grass, tall and short grass. Uh, the wildebeest, they're selective grazers, so they'll choose which grass they want to feed on. And then out of all of the animals, they all camouflage and they try to fit into the bush, except for zebra. You can spot them a mile away. Uh, that one there to the right, the leg looks broken, eh? You see how it's lifting it up. I don't think it can walk very proper as well. Mm -hmm. So that will be food for a predator that sees that. Now immediately if the predators look at a group of animals, it will look for the eldestly members or maybe injured members like this, the weakest one in between them. But like I said, uh, you can see them from a mile yeah. away. They're not developed to, to hide themselves at all. Smallest one the oxpecker birds. Mouth. They're on the back, eh? They're catching a bit of the And then this female will stick with them also just as a bit of protection as well. Now she'll also split off of them as she grows older and more confident. The one there to the right. Much bigger in size, so you'll definitely overpower the smaller one. Like they're very silent animals but if they fight then you hear most of their their calls grunts and squeals and it sounds very strange now they've got up to eight different vocalizations well, it looks like the male there at the back the back leg in the fold if you guys a bit forward looks like there's a cut already there Cuts there at the back leg, eh?
this is a spotted hyena. Looks like a male. But the males are smaller in size than the females. The females will be the biggest ones and the dominant ones as well. These are also very intelligent animals. They have got a few different communication calls, long distance calls. But the most common ones is the woo that everyone knows of. And then that laughter as soon as they start laughing. see here now is a female, the one the closest to us, and her baby, the one at the back, playing like that. <laughs> and this is that's also the, the female, you see the one the closest to us, that's the full size they grow up to. They cannot get bigger than that. A very tiny antelope. Eh? And where is the male? Ah, uh, the male, Dead. maybe she has no male, that no. he maybe was killed yeah. before the youngster was born or so. Yeah. Or he's just somewhere around you, yeah, I think. Yeah. But he will definitely always be by her side. <laughs> <laughs> Ik zie nog zien wat nu hier op die lof is. Uh, een van die individuals loopt nu met Bambi oos. Ja, ik denk hij gaan daar ook na die dam doen te gaan poeza. Je gaan in om vast reis. So, kijk maar net, een van die andere individuals begin ook nou een te mobiel te gaan en dan. En zo een lalapans hier bij die mangwas. Uh, these are three young male lions that are together. Uh, there's just two here now, so we don't know where the third one is. He might come out here. I think he might have went to drink water. So he might come back now. But this is very nice, right? Yeah. Nice and sad. <laughs> sad for the zebra. Well, they need to eat. Yes. The zebra does not die, then the lions will die. So yeah. it's a scale you need to weigh. Yes. Oh, there's the third one on top there. And this looks like up. a mother and a baby. Oh. So I don't know if it's the ones with the broken leg. That might be the one with yeah. the broken leg. They took that one down. Mother tried to protect it, but wasn't that successful in doing it. A bit more to the open there. Yeah, we can help. Now they're going for the bum there as well on that side by succulent meat. Yeah. Yes, they've cleaned out everything. There's the liver lying there with the kidneys and stuff. They can hear how those zebra are going crazy, huh? That's probably the herd where they took this off. Just took a toilet break. <laughs> Luckily there. Ah, there went Lala, right over there. 
See how strong they are, eh? That's not a light piece of meat. Yeah, they're breaking the bones, everything there. These are extremely strong animals, eh? So he might come to mark and cover blood up here again. So we'll see now what he decides. And I think they're going to pull that closer as well. Because with the smaller zebra like that, the bones are softer. Is it the liver? Yes. Yeah. He's not going to eat it? Maybe a bit later on. Okay. But they'll focus now more on the the nice succulent meat that's still left there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, luckily he's doing it there and not here. This is a beautiful site, we're very lucky.